It's 2024 and it's super important to change your approach to Facebook ads if you want to be driving success for your e-com store. Hey everyone, it's Victor, the founder of Markademix. Um, and in this video presentation, I'm going to walk you through how I am managing my own e-com ads right now as a seven-figure e-com store owner, as the founder of an e-com ads agency. And what we're doing in Markademix that is completely different from everything else that you're going to be seeing on the market that is guaranteeing success for us and our businesses uh, right now in 2024, completely different from what we were doing in 2022 or 2021 and even 2023. So we took so many of the lessons that we had in 2023 and the whole e-com market has changed so much in this time. So bear with me. For this video presentation, I am going to share with you some secret sauce that you absolutely need for your e-com business, regardless whether you are still very small and you're thinking, how can I actually scale my campaigns? Or you're spending uh, a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, even fifty thousand dollars on Facebook ads every single day. This video is going to help you out a lot. So regarding me, if you still don't know me, I'm Victor. As I told you, I have a digital agency, e-com agency actually, that's called Markademics. We're over 15 people that are e-com experts inside of that. Uh, and we're scaling accounts all around the world, in Europe, in the US, in Canada, in Australia. Wherever you're having an e-com store, we can uh, we can help you out. I'm also part of Forbes 30 Under 30. I have my own e-com brand that I scaled to seven figures in less than six months. I am a common guest speaker at different events, and I'm also teaching e-commerce advertising uh, in a program called Digital Pro. Um, we're spending and we're managing, investing millions of dollars in advertising spend on Facebook. And yeah, we're a team of experts. We're not just media buyers. We're not there just to tell you, hey, scale as much as possible. Hey, uh, spend without any profit. No. We are treating every single client and we're treating every single case as if we're the CMOs, as if we're even the owners of this brand. And um, I also have a podcast you can see in some of those photos. I've interviewed people like Alex Fellot of Carl Weiss and um, Ben Yachalon, who is the president of uh, True Classic. In general, I speak in brief ecom and uh, I'm sure that um, you enjoy this video. We've scaled many accounts. Some of our case studies are here. Some of the uh, some of the results that we brought to our brands uh, just last year. So I'm not going to stop on this that much. I know that everyone likes to have some figures, but yeah. Uh, in general, what I wanted to really talk about today is the following: um, in 2021, in 2022, I was preaching about the types of funnels that you can run on Facebook, and nowadays none of this is working. So the old Facebook ads funnel is completely dead. It doesn't work. You cannot have a funnel structure where you have top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, post purchase in the way that it used to be before so no exclusions um no mixed funnels none of that none of this is working anymore on facebook so we used to have all of this we used to be splitting audiences into top of the funnel part one where we have an abo asset budget optimization campaign for conversions with different interests and videos and single images and carousels and so on and so forth then whichever of those were winning we were putting them inside of a CBO and we were scaling that. Um, in that top of, top of the funnel, what we used to have that you shouldn't be doing nowadays is in those exact uh, funnel stages, we were having exclusions. So uh, no people that were uh, engaged to our brand, no purchases, no website visitors, none of that. We wanted completely cold audiences to be seeing our ads. And uh, it's not like you don't need those anymore. No, you need those types of audiences. However, Facebook is not working this way anymore. And I'm going to share with you why. Then we had middle of the funnel where we were talking to the people that had visited the website in the past 90 days or between the 90th and 180th day. Uh, we had ads for people that were engaged to our brand but didn't visit the website and so on and so forth. Then the bottom of the funnel was the extremely warm audiences, the people that were visited the website website but didn't purchase for some reason already and we had a post purchase campaign where we had a retention of the people um basically 
everyone has, who has purchased, we were running some post-purchase ads to make sure that they're buying again from our business. So all of this was working super well in 2021, 2022, and it completely died off in 2023, and you shouldn't be doing it in 2024. So what did really change inside of Facebook in this time? What Facebook basically said is, if you're doing all of these exclusions in top of the funnel, we're just going to increase the amount of money that you should be spending on those people. So the algorithm was is basically killing you and it's making it super, super expensive right now to be running all of those top of the funnel ads. Basically, what Facebook is pushing you to do is to be having mixed funnels, which is basically having zero funnels or campaigns where your ad sets are not targeting a specific funnel. This is very important. On one side, Facebook is telling you, please don't have a funnel, please don't have a structure. On a second thought, you need to have a funnel because nobody has um, stopped the principles of marketing where you have a customer journey, you, uh, where you have a funnel, where people that still don't know you, you educate them, they get better at something, they understand your business better, you handle their objections and then you sell. Nobody has canceled this. Yet, Facebook is telling you, don't do this. Don't have a straight up funnel like this one where you have exclusions. Why? Because basically what Facebook said is that uh, we're having issues with tracking. We're having issues with uh, like you managing all of this. We want to simplify this. We want to make it as easy as possible for everyone that's advertising on Facebook. So don't do this. We're going to increase your prices of advertising. And... Also, for top of the funnel, we're never going to attribute sales to your ad because we're only going to attribute it if directly out of a click from your first um, first time showing to um, those ads to a specific potential customer, they buy. That's the only time that we're going to attribute um, the ad to be a top of the funnel ad. If not, we're going to attribute it somewhere else inside of your so-called funnel and you're really going to be completely unprofitable according to those campaigns. So this is really interesting. If you don't have this funnel structure, then what do you actually do? And it's really important, again, to understand that nobody has stopped the laws of marketing. So if the funnel is still not there, people and the buyer's pyramid is there uh, and it's going to stay there for hundreds and thousands of years more ahead because the customer journey is more important than ever. I'm going to take a step backwards and under and explain to you why. This is the buyer spirit. You may have seen it before. You may have studied it. However, in an e-com context, what does it actually mean? Basically, what's happening all around the world in every single ad account is the following. When... We are telling Facebook, hey, uh, we're going to Facebook Ads Manager and we're like, hey, we want to be running ads that are optimized for sales uh, and we want to optimize for a maximum number of sales and conversions happening on my website. And let's say that we are selling what we're selling. Let's say that we're having wallets. And in those, uh, what we're saying, Facebook is, hey, please advertise towards the audience that has the biggest potential of buying my wallets right away, right now. What Facebook is going to do is it's going to look for the people that are ready that are ready to buy. So in this buyer's pyramid, we have five stages that are super important, and I'm going to explain to you why. The one to three percent out of your whole target audience, not of the whole market, of your whole target audience, are one to three percent are right now looking for this product and are ready to buy. The algorithm is super smart. They're tracking you everywhere you go, whatever you're saying around your phone, whatever you're even thinking, they know it. And if I'm looking right now for a wallet, I'm in those one to 3% and Facebook is going to be showing you me ads that are for wallets. Easy to understand. Basically, when we're having zero funnels or open funnels, and we're not educating people and we're just running ads for our wallets when we're telling them, hey, buy now. We're targeting the people that are ready to buy. Then 7 to 10% of our target audience are open to buying it. So 
if I am really liking wallets, maybe I'm thinking about it. Maybe I've needed a wallet for three months, but I'm like, hey, this is not my biggest priority right now. Um, if, but if I see a good offer, then I'm open to it. Then when Facebook is serving me your ads, maybe I will be, um, maybe I will be buying from you. Maybe. Who knows? Then we have 10 to 15 people that are not right now thinking about it. It's definitely not their priority. It's not inside of their top 10 priorities. They're probably ready to buy something else, but not a wallet right now. So 10 to 15% of your audience is there. 20 to 25% of their of your audience, they don't really think that they're interested in this. So they're right now, nah, no, it's just really not the time for this. I, I've just bought a wallet or maybe I just don't even think about it. So 20 to 25% of your target audience is just really not interested in it at the moment. And then you have 50% of the audience that they're not interested and they'll never buy from you. Even though maybe they like wallets or they need wallets, they just will never ever buy from you whatever you do inside of your campaigns. You might be the smartest marketing in the world, but then you're never going to sell to those 50%. And that's period. So what's really important right now, when we had this funnel where we had a top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, what we were doing was that we were talking to all of those people in the 1% to 3%, the 7 to 10%, the 10 to 15%, the 20 to 25%, and we were speaking to them throughout the whole time. And slowly but surely, we were pushing people from 20 to 25% that really didn't think that they were interested in it, inside of it to be going up and up and up the ladder. And this way, we were educating the people and were making more sales it was genius it was working like crazy especially in scale with bigger budgets this was like really sweet work to do because you were building a customer journey throughout these top of funnel middle of the funnel bottom of the funnel post purchase however when right now facebook is telling us hey don't do this we're going to make your ads extremely expensive and we're not going to attribute sales where you actually need them then what do we do when we're having open funnels right now no exclusions happening and maybe we're splitting people to uh zero funnels and warm audience what's happening if we blindly follow what facebook is telling us and what the facebook reps are telling us and what most agencies are doing and what most gurus are recommending what we're going to do is we're going to be stuck at selling to the people that are just right now ready to buy. And since more than 90% of the people that are right now on the market, in whichever niche you are, are doing maximum what the gurus are telling you or maximum what the Facebook um, advertising reps are telling you, then you're going to completely focus on the buy now category, which, how does this translate actually? What do most advertisers do wrong today? They leave it completely to the algorithm. So Facebook has said it. Facebook is God. Facebook is Jesus. Facebook is whatever. And they're leaving it to the, to the algorithm. What they're doing is just direct sales. Here is my winner ad that is showing you social proof. And it's showing you how to use it. Problem solving. Whatever it is. And then a very good offer and they sell because, hey, they know that, hey, in one good ad, I need to have a scroll stopper. Then I need to have um, what my problem is, then how I solve the problem. Then there's what's the social proof behind it. And I'm selling and good. And you have one to two winner ads. And then you try to scale those winner ads in your mixed funnels or open funnels or zero funnels or whatever you call your ads funnels uh, nowadays. And you're scaling that. That's good, but the best possible option in this case is that you're selling to the people that are right now ready to buy. Or if you are having a really interesting ad, you might be selling to a portion of the people that are open to it. So if you have a really great offer and so on and so forth, maybe you are doing it. What is the huge problem with this? You're having zero communication to the people that are really not thinking about it and they, they don't think that they're interested in it, which is actually the predominant part of your target audience, which is extremely important. Second of all, you're cutting margins because what is your Facebook uh, advertising expert or your agency or, who, or your rep telling you? Hey, 
we need a great offer. We need to offer something that is super bold. But what this what this is doing is I am buying because there is an offer. I'm not buying because I really need this. And the circle that is becoming here is that, yeah, the, the, the offer is great. However, you're cutting your margins and you cannot really scale up. Because uh, if you have low margins and the, uh, the situation in most businesses is that with a lower margins, this is cutting their profits, this is cutting their scalability, and they're having 10 to 15% uh, profit margins at the end of the day of the business, which is really not sustainable. With one bigger expense or one drop in ROAS, you're dead with this type of strategy because you are really pushing your business to the limit. And that's, and that's a problem. The second issue which is going to happen is if you're always having great offers and you're not focusing on education and other parts of what you're doing is people are going to be immune to you advertising without any offers. What does that mean? They will be expecting you to have an offer. They will be expecting you to have um, a big discount, which is educating the audience to wait until the next discount. It's okay. If it's for a first purchase, however, you don't want to be educating your people that they're ready to buy only when you're having a discount. And third of all, you're going after the wrong target audience while having huge discounts. Why? Because maybe you're then selling to the people that will never be buying from you on your original price. And they're having a very tough time buying from you on a discount, but they're like, hey, this product is really cool. Um, maybe because they have a great ad or maybe because it was like presented in a really nice way. I will be buying it once at this price, the discounted price with maybe 50% off, but I'm never buying this on an original price. And then you're, feel, you're uh, filling out your funnel with people that are never going to buy from you for the second time on an original price. And you need to continue selling on a discounted price until forever. This is not sustainable. And this is what's happening to over 95% of the businesses that are contacting us. They're having issues with their margins. They're having issues with their offers. They're having issues with their retention. And that's the reason why if you go online and you start checking what's going on with the big startups in, in the DTC market, uh, they were spending millions of dollars on advertising. They're all stuck right now, or most of them are stuck right now because what they did was they were spending money like crazy on offers on so-called winners without actually educating their audience on why they actually need to believe in the brand and love the brand and have retention for the brand and not have any issues with them having low discounts. This is all wrong. If you have one to two winner ads, if you're still leaving all to cost caps, and I've seen uh, this is cost caps. I'm going to edit it while having the video. If you're still having cost caps and you're leaving the whole ad account to cost caps, if you are doing creative testing on ads with absolutely zero potential, if you're not educating your audience on what your product is, why it's great, why they should be having it in their daily life, regardless of what the price is. If you don't have rules for creative testing and scaling, if you have a lack of understanding of creative and the, and the need and what it really needs to have inside of it in order to sell, then I got to admit that this is the hardest time for you to really succeed on Facebook today. Even though everyone is talking about it, hey, Facebook has is, uh, is never been uh, as simple as today. Yeah, inside of it, there, there are not so many tricks uh, here and there inside of the platform itself. Now is the age or it's the era of Facebook where you need to focus completely on the creative messaging and how you're actually and how you are showing that in front of your target audiences so they actually buy from you. So... Facebook is the hardest or it's the hardest time on Facebook to be successful today. It's the simplest platform that Facebook has ever had, but you have so much rivalry right now on Facebook. Everyone knows that they should be spending on Facebook. All the big companies know that they should be spending on Facebook and they are spending on Facebook. 
everything is so visual nowadays on Facebook. So you need to be very creative on how you are showing your ads, yet the marketing messaging and the strategy as is so important today. It's never been so important as right now. Yes, you could be making some money with buy now ads. Yes, you could be making some money with open with the audience that are open to buying it. Maybe uh, if you have a great ad and someone has done a fantastic job. But these are all tactics. And these tactics are basically just delaying your uh, decline inside your business because if the strategy if the whole messaging if what you want to deliver to your potential customers is still not there or it's not inside of your ads and it's maybe not bringing the biggest ROAS at the moment then you're facing trouble and the fact of the matter is that facebook still has absolutely no alternative so if you're like yeah facebook is so is so hard to nail nowadays i'm just gonna quit it sorry there is no other paid alternative um, TikTok is not working uh, so far as much as we thought it's going to work. I I also believe that TikTok was going to be a bigger game. No, it's working just for cheap products that are easy to consume. Probably not not the cup of tea of ninety five percent of businesses right now. Google Google is the hardest place to scale because it's working with people that are intent based, so they are already having some intention of buying. Facebook is the only place where you can get consistent results with paid ads to get new customers, then retain them and have your business growth, period. So what do you need to do in 2024 to scale up your Facebook ads and deliver results? There are some new funnel rules. You need to have creative testing campaign and that's super important. And basically the way that I am doing this is the following. I'm taking my um, target cost per acquisition. Let's say that I'm selling those wallets and they're, they cost a hundred dollars in retail price. My target cost per acquisition is $30. Basically what I'm going to, what I'm going to do is if I really, really want to do, uh, extensive creative testing, um, I'm going to put a cap of 40 to 45 dollars, um, to test a single creative. If I can, if I have a more expensive product, then I'm probably going to change the strategy a little bit. But if my target cost per acquisition is like 30, 35 doors, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend up to 40 to 45 doors. And if I don't have a sale or I don't have really good soft metrics, then I'm killing the ad. Make sure that you're having such tests every single uh, week with new creatives. And if you know that a certain creative is really not going to do a job and the re the only difference between the first and the second creative that you're testing is like just basically what the button is or what the call to action is that's really not going to do it for you you need to be testing different types um, of creatives inside of our creative library we have over 95 different types of creatives that um, we have seen working for different brands. Whenever we're starting to work with a new brand, we go inside of our library, we look at those 95 examples that are what right now, probably while I'm making this video, there are probably over 100 already. But we go inside of this library and we look for the creatives that have the biggest potential of selling um, or working for our business in this case. Then we test this and we see the different concepts and how they're performing. We just really want to make sure that we have at least five to seven different concepts that are constantly being tested. What does this mean? Uh, I want to be testing different objection handling methods throughout. Maybe I'm having a UGC. Maybe I have a mixture of UGCs. Maybe I have a POV point of view. Maybe I have a collection. Maybe I have banners. Maybe I have offers. Maybe I have something else. It doesn't matter. You can have, as I said, we have... Uh, we have 95 different scenarios. Maybe there are over 100 already while I'm filming this um, this video with different ads uh, that are working for different businesses that we're operating with. So make sure that you are having creative testing all the time. Second of all, you must have rules for scaling and descaling. And more importantly, I would say most media buyers, they know how to scale campaigns. They have no idea how to descale campaigns. And the biggest losses that every business is taking while is while descaling. When an army is going 
frontally and everything is working when you're assaulting a new castle and you are doing a great job everything seems great and most media buyers they're good at this however most media buyers really suck when they have to descale, when you have to retreat when you have to save your forces when you need to save your soldiers and your resources they're really bad at this and that's the time when your enemies are going to inflict the biggest damage to your business and to uh, in uh, basically low profit margins or even losses. So when you are scaling, you need to have a rule for this. And it's really going to be based on how your ad account is working. However, I would say that in order to scale up, uh, a biggest red, a big red flag would be if I only have one to two ads that are working. If I have only one to two ads that are working, that's a really big red flag for me. I want to make sure that I'm having four to five different ads that are working, and then I'm scaling up. And you can scale very ag aggressively if you understand your account, and you can go with more than just the twenty percent that Facebook is telling you that it's like the safe net. Uh, you can go vertically very quickly if you understand how so that's a second thing that you need to focus on in order to make sure that you are scaling the second thing that i'm definitely having when i'm scaling creative since making sure that i'm having whitelisting set up so if i'm only scaling through, through one existing account that's not going to do the job in most of the cases for me i'm gonna scale up through multiple pages in order to be filling out the algorithm and feeding the algorithm with different pages and different ads really helping out then when we're descaling on a daily basis sometimes even on an hourly basis you should be looking at the profits if you're not doing profits you need to descale and that doesn't mean okay i'm going to leave the account for seven days and then i'm gonna go back and see if something's working or if it's not working no if something's not working, then you start descaling it with 30%, 40%, even 50% if that's the case. So your media buyer or the person that is in charge of your ad account should be looking at the profits and should be looking at what's going on inside of the business and make decisions on a daily basis, especially when you're investing more money. And the truth is what most agencies are doing is the following. They're looking at your account once maximum twice every uh, on a weekly basis then they don't even look at your results they don't know what your profits are they don't know if the results are good or not and they're looking at some soft metrics that's in the good if if it's a good even media bar and then they're deciding whether to scale the scale or stop some campaigns the reality is that nobody likes to admit defeat and that's why they're not descaling and they're trying something new why because maybe you're paying them based on their advertising uh, shares if they're spending more money they're getting more money so they have no intentions of descaling as a business owner when i founded my e-com store that's when i completely understood that hey i should be looking at the business growth and the business ideas of my clients if not then i'm going to lose them and they're not going to uh, pay attention to me that's why every single client of marketemics is managed as if these are our own businesses that's the only way that we can guarantee that you have good results um with your advertising campaigns so rules for scaling and descaling are absolutely needed and then what a creative really needs to have in order to sell so what a creative really needs in order to sell is the following i would take 10 to 15 of the most common objections that my potential customers are having let's say that we take again the wallet idea i really want to understand what the mo the wallet is made of is it really expensive for me uh is it going to break up after five to six months is it really going to um hold up all my cards is it easy to steal my debit cards or credit cards or whatever what's my protection so many different um what is it made of is it a real skin or is it like yeah is it real skin what the, what's the the wallet made of i want to understand all of these things before i'm buying if i'm a potential customer maybe for me i'm price sensitive maybe for me i am sensitive towards what's the feeling of it maybe i'm sensitive towards what's the brand behind it maybe i'm sensitive towards something else you need to tackle the different objections and when you go inside your ad account 
something very quickly that you can do is go and search your ad account, look at the ads that are running right now, and ask yourselves how many objections are you handling with your ads at the moment. Honestly, even stop this video right now. Go inside your ad account and look at how many objections you're handling with your ads right now. How many fears you're tackling and answering in your ads. In the majority of the times when I'm doing live audits, what I'm seeing is that we're handling almost none. We're just showing that, hey, we have nice wallets, they're great, and that's it. And we have a great offer. Maybe for the price sensitive people, we have something, that's it. And that's a huge issue. Then I'm going to write down seven to 10 different ad formats, problem solving, UGCs, point of view, split screens, whatever. There's so many. We have, as I said, 95 different ones of them. And we're going to be testing seven to 10 of those every single week. And I'm going to make sure that inside my ad account, if I want to scale it, that I have at least five to six of those running continuously. Combine the objections and the ad formats and run those. Because what is going to happen is the following. Facebook is actually really smart. Uh, I told you about the buyer's pyramid and I told you about the old funnel. The old funnel was structuring the, the pyramid in a really nice way. Nowadays, what Facebook is going to do is if you have seven to 10 different objections, Facebook is really smart and it's going to look for the people that are buying now, that are open to it. It's going to show them the objections that they need to be handled in order to buy but it's also going to be educating the people that are really not thinking about it and they don't really are not really interested in it uh, right now. Uh, if you don't believe me in, inside of this, look at your statistics. Inside of your ads, what's going on is that out of 100 people that are seeing the ad, maybe 2 to 3% of them are clicking on the ad. So these are open to it or ready to buy. Uh, out of those 2 to 3 people that are open to it or ready to buy, um, from a hundred of those, actually, maybe one to five of them, depending on your conversion rate are buying. So basically, if we take a thousand people, maybe out of them, 20 are going to click and maybe only one of those 20 people are, is going to buy immediately. So you have out of a thousand people that are seeing your ad, only one is really ready to buy immediately out of your ad. And, there, and the other 999 people, they had a reason not to buy from you. So you need to make sure that this percentage is in your favor. So you need to increase it. And that's in a good case, actually. In many cases, out of 10,000 people that are watching the ad, only one is buying. Or maybe out of 10,000 people, nobody is buying. And then that's a huge problem. So you need to be solving this. And the way to solve it is exactly what I told you. You go, you pick the 10 to 15 out of, uh, objections that you have. If you don't know them, ask your customers, run a survey through your email campaigns. And ask them, yeah, what are they scared of? What would they do? What they what they like about your products? What they were afraid of, and so on and so forth. Think about it, write it down, and answer those with the ad formats that are working at the moment. Most probably inside of the website of of uh, Marketemics, you're going to see other videos or other. Uh, blog posts that are answering some of those questions on how to do this. So maybe watch around the watch around our website and you're going to find even more information about it. However, it's super important and this is the easiest strategy that you can be using. Seven to ten different formats, combining objections and the ad formats and run, run proper creative testing. Oh, it's not testify, it's testing. Again, sorry for my misspelling. Rules. 1.5 times the, the, the target cost per acquisition is my first rule that I uh, that I showed you and I, I told you about. So again, if I want to be spending up to $30 uh, for, um, for my ads uh, to be converting, I'm going to spend up to $45 maximum until I kill um, a creative or I scale a creative. And then my option number two, and this is really working hard when I'm uh, when I want to be testing 15 20 30 different creatives at a time uh, spend 10 to 15 dollars per creative and look at your click through rates and add to cart rates if your click through rate is three times lower than your average kill the kill the ad when it when it has spent 10 to 15 dollars if you don't really have any add to carts uh, in 
inside of that period, KOD at uh, while it still it, it still hadn't uh, hasn't uh, lost a lot of money for you. If I'm doing this for thirty different ads at the same time, maybe it's going to be very costly for me to be spending forty five dollars each. Or if I'm having a more expensive product, just like in my own brand. I can't allow myself to be spending a hundred dollars per ad in order to know that it's working properly. So for that reason, I'm going to be killing uh, my ads when they've spent 10, 15, even 20 dollars based on the click through rates and add to cart rates. These are the two options. Even if you just take these two examples from this video, you are going to be much more successful in 2024, but really don't forget about what I just shared to you. And then number five, have scaling campaigns. If you don't have a scaling campaign uh, and you're just working with your evergreen ones, uh, you're probably losing a lot of money on the table. So have a scaling campaign, typically a CBO uh, with your uh, with your different ads and creatives, uh, with your different ad sets and creatives that are working right now. And a constant new flow of creatives based on the winning ads is what you need. What do the, what those creatives really need to have inside of them in order to be selling well? They need to have social proof. They need to have a good scroll stopper. They need to have a clear problem definition, strong call to action, and it should be done in the proper ad formats. Again, we've been talking about those ad formats forever. So look around the, um, our pages and you'll learn even more about them. But since I, didn't, I don't want to make this video for an hour and a half, what I'm going to say is that 2024 is not a year for slacking. So don't do the things that they were done the old way. Don't believe in the people that are saying that everything that used to work in 2022 is the same thing. It's really time to level up and stop wasting time and money on strategies that can that just cannot work anymore. Again, don't waste your money on creatives that you know that are the same creatives that you used to run a week ago. It's just not going to do the job. It's just not going to make it happen for you. So if you want to steal our strategies, if you want to steal the way that we're, that we're working, and um, if you're looking for a partner that can teach your advertising team how to do this, or you need a partner that you can outsource your work uh, for your advertising campaign stores to, you can always message me at victorymarketdemics.net or you can visit marketdemics.com and book a call directly there. Uh, we're open to it. We're not taking too many clients at the time. Uh, the reason for this is that we're working with a smaller group of clients, but for a very long time because we're only interested in building long-term term relationships. I'm really not interested in having five different uh, uh, five different clients every single month to be joining our uh, ecosystem where 15 people maybe will be 16 or 17 soon but that's it we don't want to scale rapidly inside of our own business why because we're going to lose effectiveness efficiency and we're not going to be showing the same amount of care as we're doing it right now so for us it's really important for you to succeed and that's the only time that we're succeeding so if you're interested in this uh let me know message me on victorymarketdemics.com or book a call at marketdemics.com and we're going to talk about your brand and your scaling potential so yes i hope that this uh, was very helpful for you share it with your friends share it with other e-com store owners or people that are in charge of facebook ads and uh, looking forward to your comments and feedback and uh, open to discussion if you don't agree with me on something. So yes, stay tuned. Make 2024 a really successful year for you and your e-com store. And I'll see you very soon.